Hi everyone, in this video we're going to define triple integrals and do a simple example. So let's say we have a function f of x, y, z. So this is a function of three variables and let's say it's defined on q. So q here is some uh, bounded solid region. It's the domain of our function f. So let's look at a picture of Q. So this is the z-axis, this is the x-axis, and this is the uh, y-axis. And so then maybe this is Q here. And so let's pretend we can cover Q. The idea is to, to cover Q with infinitely many boxes. So let me draw a giant box here. This is my giant box. It's a 3D box, right? It's a 3D object. Everything here is three-dimensional, right? This is calculus three. So three dimensions. And so what you want to do is uh, you want to cover Q with boxes. So I drew a big box, and now I'm going to draw a bunch of little boxes. So here's one little box. Okay. And there's our little 3D box. And, you know, if you draw a box, let me draw a little bigger over here so you see it. It's my weak attempt at a box. Um, there are three dimensions, X. Uh, I guess we can call this one Y and this one Z. It doesn't really matter. So what we do is we look at the volume of the ith box, and that can be written as delta x sub i, delta y sub i, delta z sub i. So that will be the volume of the ith box. Now consider all of the boxes that are contained entirely in Q. Let me highlight Q. Q is this blob here. It's this 3D blob. So you have infinitely many boxes uh, in Q. And so what you do is you let this symbol here, this is called the norm. Okay, this is called the norm. So this is the length of the longest diagonal. So diagonal of, let's say, of the n boxes. Say we have n boxes. So you let the norm go to zero, which is the length of the longest diagonal. So what happens is if you let the length of the longest diagonal of a box go to zero, right? That means that the biggest box, its length, uh, the length of its diagonal is going to go to zero. So if the biggest box goes to zero, they all go to zero. So what happens is you get infinitely many boxes, right, covering um, this solid region here, Q. And so when you do that, what happens is the triple integral, right? You call it the triple integral of f over q, okay? And you write it like this, dv, right? Instead of dA or dx or dy, it's dv. It's equal to the limit, okay? It's equal to the limit as the norm goes to zero of the sum, right? Of the sum as i runs from 1 to n of your function f of x sub i, y sub i, z sub i. That's a point inside the box, uh, delta v sub i. So you take the limit, uh, so you basically multiply the, um, the volume of the box by the function. You take the limit, uh, the limit of the sum, and you call that uh, the triple integral. Now, in the special case that this function is equal to 1, what happens is you get this integral here, right, 1 dv, and what would that look like? That would be the limit as the uh, norm goes to 0 of the sum, and in this case what we're doing uh, is we're just adding up these little volumes and we're taking the limit, so we're getting infinitely many volumes, so we're actually getting the volume of q, right, we're getting the volume of q. So a triple integral becomes a volume in the special case where your function um, is equal to 1. So, uh, so you can use triple integrals to find volume, right? Uh, all you have to do is just integrate over the whole region and integrate 1, right? Integrate 1. Um, I think I'll stop the video here, and in the next video, I'll make an example of how to actually uh, compute a triple integral. This took a little bit longer than expected, but that's the idea behind triple integrals. It's very similar to regular integrals, right? In Calc 1, 
you find area with regular integrals in Calc 3. You can find volume using triple integrals and double integrals, but using triple integrals, uh, you can do it uh, this way. I hope this has made even just a little bit of sense. That's it.